Hey, this is Marlon from MarlonMattFresson.com and in this podcast episode and video, I'm going to talk about how to start a solo podcast for your business or brand. Now, this is the third video or the third episode in the series that I'm doing to cover growth strategies or top of funnel strategies that you can use to drive discovery and growth for your audience. So I previously talked about YouTube and blog posts, and this is the third big one, which is basically podcasting. But in particular, I'm gonna be talking about solo podcasts, simply because those are the easiest to get started with. And if you don't quite understand what a solo podcast means, it's simply a a podcast that you do on your own, meaning that you do not have any guests or co-hosts, which means you can just get on with it. You don't have to rely on anyone else to get the content done, recorded and uh, distributed. So that's what we're going to dive into in this episode of Future Steps Creative. So if you're new here, again, my name is Marlon Matt This is Future Steps Creative, the online business podcast that talks about strategies around your website and content marketing so you can build and grow your online business and brand. So I've got an associated post with this that I'm going to run through. I'll leave a link to the post it will have any links in there that i've mentioned and it will have more details about this but this is going to be a summary of this post in this particular podcast episode and it's a new way that i'm trying to see if i can get uh, some notes out ahead of time or some a post in place that i can kind of reference and pass that on to you straight away so let's see how this goes so if you're unsure what a podcast actually is a podcast is simply audio content that is distributed online uh, via a platform that hosts and distributes the the audio for you. Now, people can listen to the podcast on their devices through their favorite podcast player, as I mentioned about this particular podcast before, or they can find it in a directory online, such as in iTunes, and they're able to listen uh, via their web browser or directly from your website if you have that podcast feed going through to your website. So without making it too technical or anything like that, it's simply a way that you can distribute content via audio recording. So the question is, why do a podcast? Podcasts are quite unique in the sense that you don't have to focus on a screen in order to consume the content, which makes it a lot more flexible than, say, videos or written content, wherein you have to actually focus on the screen to actually know what's going on. A podcast can be consumed whilst doing other things, and that's a quite quite a big advantage there. Um, I tend to listen to podcasts when I'm driving, when I'm on long trips, as well as if I'm doing any other activities. I could be going for a walk or a run or even cycling. I can actually just have my earbuds in and listen to a podcast and I can actually consume quite a lot and learn quite a lot without having to stop and focus on the particular content. So it's more like passive listening um, in a way because you don't have to actually stop what you're doing to concentrate on, on the actual content. So what that means for you as a content creator, as a business or brand, is that you're able to now reach another part of your audience or a bigger audience than you would normally because you're not just restricting your content publishing to videos or written posts where other people might not be able to find a time to actually sit down and consume that. So it's it's just another segment of your audience that you would be able to reach and um, be able to deliver more value to. So that's the the main reason why I would say that you'd want to have a podcast. It's just giving um, people another option and giving you another opportunity to reach more people. So with that, let's just jump into what you're actually going to need in place to start a podcast. So the first thing I would say is to have a content plan. So you need to know what topics you're going to be talking about or what the general theme of your podcast is going to be, as well as who the audience um, is that you're targeting. And this is important because it keeps you on topic and help you to keep things relevant to your audience. The last thing you want is to have your episodes all over the place and people are not quite sure what to expect 
and in turn they don't really get as much value out of it because it's kind of not focused around a particular thing that is going to help them achieve a certain outcome. So it's important for you to understand um, who your audience is. And of course, this is something you would have already worked out if you've started your business already. And if you're already creating some other type of content, you would know, you know who you're speaking to. This is important, right? So you would just translate that into a podcast and um, just package it to speak to those people. The next thing you're going to need in place is a good microphone. The fact that you're doing audio recordings, you need to have good, clear audio that is easy to listen to and doesn't have a lot of background noise or poor quality to it. And um, having a good mic doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to go out and get an, a really expensive or fancy mic. It just means that you just need to use something else that's not built into your device like your laptop or your mobile phone because generally speaking those types of uh, mics are not really good quality and they introduce a lot of the things that we don't want like the noise and so on having a mic externally means that you're able to bring the audio closer to the source or the the microphone clo closer to the source therefore eliminating much of the background noise because you're more focused in on the, the the voice the person that's speaking as opposed to having it further away built into your laptop or something like that where it's now picking up not just you but everything else that's going on so a starting point for a mic could be a lapel mic these are really affordable you can grab them on amazon for under 20 pounds or 20 dollars and you could actually just plug that straight into your laptop or in some cases you might need to have a little adapter to split the signal because if your laptop or even your mobile phone has a mic and headphone built into one jack, you need to have that split. So just a little adapter to split that out and you'll be able to use that and get much better audio going into your device than if you were to use the built-in microphones. Later down, you can actually upgrade and get a dynamic mic like the one that I'm using right now. I'm actually using the Samson uh, Q2U, which is a USB microphone, but it's dynamic in the sense that it's not um, it's not overly sensitive and it rejects a lot of background noise. This particular model is able to use USB, so I'm just going straight into my laptop right now as I record with my webcam in front of me. Um, and it's just connected, like I said, via USB going into my recording software. But it also has an XLR connection, which is like a professional mic connection. So if I wanted to connect it to a soundboard, I can do that. But like I said, starting with, even if it's just the headset that you're mobile phone comes with with a built-in mic that you can actually talk on and have a conversation using that is much better than using a built-in microphone on your device the next thing is to have a recording device and i've just uh, touched on that slightly i'm recording into my laptop right now and i'm using a screen recording software which captures audio and video but we're just going to focus on audio like i said in this particular post so let's um, talk about other software that you can use. Um, you could use paid software, but there's a free um, audio recording and editing software called Audacity that you can grab and it works on Mac and Windows. So you can actually install that and start recording into it and editing your podcast after um, the fact into it. Um, you could also record into your mobile phone or tablet using any one of the many uh, audio recording or note-taking apps that's available. And a third option is that you could use an external audio recorder such as a Zoom H1, which is a little handy pocket recorder. You can just plug your mic straight into that. It uses uh, a micro SD card. You could just record to that and then you just need to transfer the audio recording to your computer so you can actually um, do the editing to it. Which brings me to the next point. The thing that uh, the next thing you'll you'll need is an um, audio editing um, software or audio editing tools, and I've already touched on this. You can use Audacity for this. Um, if you're on a Mac, you can use um, GarageBand or um, some other uh, software that allows you to to chop up audio and to rearrange it. 
Um, chances are you will need to edit your podcast um, even to remove mistakes um, or to add on something else to it, let's say an intro and an outro or to just add some music to it as well. And potentially you might have to clean up some of the background noise. Some of these uh, softwares um, or software programs have um, audio noise reduction so you can actually utilize that in editing as well. So the next point that I'd like to talk about is publishing your podcast. Now, once you've recorded and edited your podcast episode, you have that file, it needs to be distributed online. So you need to have a podcast hosting service that helps you to do this. Um, most of them, uh, you can find them on uh, Google, just do a quick Google search for podcast uh, hosting services. You can find them for as little as five US dollars a month. Um, so it depends on how much you upload or the file size and the amount of storage you have available to you and so on. So just have a look at the various plans and price points. They pretty much all do the same thing. You just need to upload your file to them and create the episode, um, the details of the episode and just hit publish. And they in turn then sends it, send it out to um, iTunes or Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts, Stitcher, um, Spotify, all the, the platforms that they're connected with. And most of them are connected with the majority of podcast um, platforms right now. So um, basically, that's how you would distribute your podcast. Now, if you don't want to spend any money right now, there's a free platform slash service called Anchor, anchor.fm, Anchor as in a ship's anchor. You can actually um, upload your file to them on their platform. They actually have a, a way for you to listen on their platform, but they also can push your podcast out to um, one of the, the any of the, the many apps or plat other platforms that's available, as I've mentioned earlier. I have, well, I have tried them out before, but to me, there were some restrictions that I didn't want. So I just thought it would be better to have a dedicated hosting platform that I pay for. Um, that way I don't have all these res restrictions and I have maximum flexibility with how I can um, distribute my podcast. Now, if you have further questions about how to start or publish your podcast, you can leave me comments inside the YouTube comments area if you're watching the video on YouTube. Um, but if you do need some extra help and guidance in general with your online strategy for your website and your content marketing, do head over to futurestepscreative.com where I have a membership program that can help you with some training and some ongoing support from me to help you make faster progress. You can actually start there for free. So I hope to see you there over on futurestepscreative.com. That's all I've got for you in this particular episode today. Do check out the links that I've, uh, I will be leaving a link to the post associated with this. So you can actually go and read the information and um, get any of the links that I've mentioned. But until next time, believe in yourself, have faith, and most of all, take action. Speak to you soon.